Welcome back to some professional beyond all reason. The Total Annihilation 2 we never had. The open source, high stress, and volunteer based strategy game that you have been annoyed by me playing if you're a StarCraft fan. And if you're an RTS fan, ecstatic. Let me introduce in this 1v1 match on Titan Duel. One of the best players, he's rank 36, or he's true skill rank 36, which I think puts him pretty solidly high up the leaderboard. It is Master Bell, spawning as the Armada Commander on Titan Duel. On the other side, Mighty Sheep, picking Cortex. He's 40, so according to the rankings, favored here. And there is a 1v1 tournament coming up if this ends up posted before april 8th i do plan on casting the uh, uh at least the finals and some of the highlights but i thought it would be good to make an attempt at it uh beforehand but let me start off your quick rundown what is beyond all reason no it's not supreme commander no it isn't total annihilation but it shares a lot of similarities three key reasons calm down all right fancy soundtrack three key resources energy a yellow bar metal the gray and build power which uses both of those to create units and buildings essentially you build up an army try to deny your opponent resources or you just throw everything at their commander and hope for the best because especially in 1v1 the commander is everything once the commander dies the game is over so, and in 1v1, there's no sort of uh, fallback. There's nowhere to retreat. It's just you and whatever you're able to construct with those three resources. Now, I think kind of a key point of 1v1 is you get access overall to a lot more metal uh, because you get access to all of those metal extractors. A lot more than you get in your average team game. But at the same time, you don't have anyone covering your flanks. You don't have anyone who's going to stop little things like ticks from the Armada or grunts from the Cortex. The cheapest units that get out on the map and take a look around. So both players are going to have to be careful about how far they expand out unprotected. Of course, at the end of the day, the best defense is sometimes a good offense. So Master Bell. And, and a few other things to note in 1v1. The commander and its placement. The commander has the most build power. So different units have different build power. Constructor bots, they got 80. The commander has 300. So they can sink that build power into building things more or less powerfully. I know, it sounds crazy. But deciding where and when you're going to use it and managing it correctly is a surprisingly complicated part of the game that does take a lot of practice and uh, uh, preparation. So if you want to build something fast, you want the commander to do it. But if you don't have enough resources, it doesn't matter. We already get off. And in 1v1, just getting units on the field is oftentimes far, far superior to uh, teching up quickly because there is no substitute for boots or whatever these things have on the ground. As you see the ticks here, very cheap, can easily take out those metal extractors, which are surprisingly fragile, but also very cheap themselves. Only 50 metal, your average unit. The grunts cost 30 I'm going to try to click on them and show for those who don't know, but I think, uh, in fact, for this, because I wanted to be a little educational. I'm sorry we didn't do all this beforehand. Jimmy should have reminded me. We're going to throw DPS and flanking direction up. Um, as well as some of the defense ranges, uh, just to get an idea of what kind of range. Though, I think I need to be on people's view for that. Because flanking is a big part of why spamming units like uh, grunts, pawns, and ticks here is, is much more important than getting those high-tech units. Because you can effectively double your damage by getting behind one of those units, and it does more from that backside, and that is why Master Bell trying to swarm these grunts on the left flank where the geothermal is potentially used. Radar coming up. 
I'm actually going to go to Master Bell's player view. As you can see, the radar dots. They're not perfect. You don't know exactly where they are, but it gives you a little bit of warning. The radar is very cheap, kind of like a sensor tower in SC2. Comes up very quickly, and it's completely necessary to give you any sort of warning as these units move in. I'm actually going to go to the player cam and get an idea of what they're focusing on here. So far, 18 uh, metal income. You can see over here. Uh, well, we can only see Master Bells right now, but the resource income. Only 140 energy, so only really enough to, to easily pump out some of those early game units. Like, well, it's been a whole bunch of ticks. Adding on a bunch of uh, wind turbines as well. The wind on this map averages at 14, which makes wind turbines the most efficient way to gather energy, especially early on. Very cheap, uh, easy to build, and uh, if the wind's high enough, very efficient. More units over to the left side. Grunt trying to target down. Overall, I think Mighty Sheep has been doing a mighty good job of cutting down Master Bell's opportunities. He's sitting back at home. He's got himself a whole bunch of wind turbines put together by the man himself. He's secured a, most of the metal extractors on his half of the map. And he's enjoying, currently, uh, a almost double the metal income of his opponent. I don't even think he has any metal converters or energy converters yet where you can convert some of your excess energy into into metal that especially in 1v1 that's more of a late game option because metal is supposed to be so easily accessible oh all right the battle lines are drawn the ticks looking for an opportunity and well, he's, he's trying to bait it out because the grunts have slightly more range, but less DPS. So those units from Armada need to get close and on top of the grunts in order to prevent them from kiting back. And indeed they do. Here you go. All those grunts getting wiped out, the, out, uh, wiped off, wiped, wiped. I'll settle on that. Uh, less forgiving, definitely. And more to worry about. I, uh, Master Bell just decides to... I don't I don't know if he's talking to someone. Um, I don't have spectator chat on, but spectators can just chat with the players most of the time, so... Overall, a, a significant victory, if only to gain some map control here. Gonna try to take down those light laser turrets, which are mostly there just to stop random units from sneaking by, but... You can flank laser turrets as well, as you see Master Master Bell able to take it down with a relatively small amount of units. They really aren't that tough to beat. The turrets are uh, 90 metal. Compare that to pawns, which are 40, uh, 48? Yes, 48. So two pawns already cost more metal than the light laser turrets. That's not how math... Wait, that is how math works. Yeah, that's 96. All right. The numbers don't lie, and they spell disaster for you. Grunt's trying to kite here on the left flank. So, honestly, a relatively passive... <laughs> yes, I call this passive for a 1v1. As the lines have been drawn, and only, only light skirmishes so far in the first eight or so minutes. Why do they build metal extractors beside the metal? Uh, they're a little easier to protect most of the time that way, especially early on, because it's one-to-one. -one. If you have a metal extractor within a certain range of the metal, it's gathering it. That's all that matters. It doesn't have to be right on target. There's a, a, essentially a radius. You can pretty much just draw it around there. What is my fancy camera key? Ah, ah yes. All right. I'm, I apologize in advance. Okay. Because I, I still have not gotten used to all the camera options. Oh, by the way, a vehicle switch by Master Bell is chasing down the grunts. Overrunning them. And that vehicle switch may be enough to reclaim some semblance of map control here. But flipping things around... 
we see a whole lot of economy has been developed by Mighty Sheep. He's got a field of wind turbines spread out slightly, so that way the chain reaction of the explosion does not obliterate his army, or, or all of them at once, rather, which is very satisfying to watch, but less satisfying if you're the one trying to get energy. But Master Bell, on the other hand, not nearly as much energy in general. He's, he's overall kind of struggling, adding on some metal extractors. And what do we have here? An air pad. Trying for the, uh, as much as I love this song. I need, I need dramatic music. Let me, how about conflict? I don't know. There's so many, uh, original soundtrack options. I've combined both the soundtracks, but I don't even know really what that means. How about let's do, you have been chosen. Because a big dramatic move, a big tech switch here from Master Bell, switching into aircraft, which can be incredibly effective, but also a big risk as a, a big investment just to build that air pad, especially since he's a... Oh my god, if you lose the commander, you lose the game. There's no trading the commander out here. Some flame turrets, some pop-up flame turrets in the center. Hard to spot until, well, you're already getting pretty lit. What was the button? What was the button for the cameras? It was, uh, oh yeah. There we are. There's your standard camera. Uh, some of those stout tanks. Pretty good at sniping off turrets. Anything exposed here, the light laser turrets, no match. And now, we gotta go to the mighty sheep cam. Which is quite a statement. Um, he has no idea. Master Bell, I think, has been doing a good good job. This is essentially hiding your battle cruisers. Oh, wait. Did you see that radar? Yeah, let's see. What is Master Bell building now? Did he notice? There's a, there was a blip on the radar that was moving very much unlike a ground unit. He does have some missile trucks, I believe, which have anti-air capability. Um, yes, uh, they're not great at it overall, but here comes the aircraft. The bombers looking for an opportunity, looking for the line of grunts here, not paying any attention. The bombing run going to hit the turrets as well, not taking them out, but... The turrets, while they tickle the bombers, it's not going to be nearly enough to bring them down. Mighty Sheep coming in. And, oh god, the wind turbines. They might be spread out to stop a chain reaction, but a carpet bomb, on the other hand, is more than enough. And even when the bombers go down, they may end up hitting it. Another line onto the wind turbines. And this is most certainly going to hamstring production. Most of the bombers now getting taken out as anti-air turrets have been put up. But coming around for one last pass. And this has cut heavily into Mighty Sheep's potential income. Down it goes. But has it been worth it? Master Bell has used this opportunity to regain some ground on the north side of the map. Overall, not even an attempt at any of the geothermals. So, and another round of bombers back. Oh, wait, those are fighters instead, though can be used for some scouting. Getting vision is one of the hardest parts of the game. So here's one of my favorite features. You can use this in-game if you're playing as well. You see, I go, I press tab by default. It's control T on grid. And if you press it again, it'll go to wherever your cursor is. Which is one of the most intuitive features take some getting used to because i'm not used to games doing things so smartly like that but very convenient for flipping back and forth if you need to overall about equal but somehow they're both under 100 percent efficiency <laughs> master bell though has retaken a lot of the map mighty sheep maintains a significant income lead Though the the stretch for tier two is still has not yet begun because that tier two the reason why your teammates may yell at you or you're wondering why don't they tech up because tier two is insanely expensive. Uh, I would I would liken it to going straight to hive in SC two not layer as Zerg but instead hive or rushing a mothership. That's the cost of it because. 
2900 in metal. Uh, as you see right now, the income varying between like 40 and 60, but without any units. And that is just to build the production facility, let alone any of the units, the advanced constructor, which gives you the advanced metal extractors. So getting getting to a uh, uh, tier two tech in 1v1, I mean, that's another 20 tanks your opponent could build while you're just building the production facility. So the payoff takes quite a bit. Ooh, actually using the armed metal uh, extractors here, which have more HP, Cortex specific, Armada, on the other hand, has the stealthy metal extractors, which are not easily visible, and also when they die, they release an EMP blast. So if they're getting sniped by small amounts of units, at least you can stop the bleed. Awkward. So the construction bot could reclaim the, uh, the the metal extractor of his opponent but here comes a bit of a run by the brutes versus the stouts here i'm not sure they stack up in a 1v1 scenario oh wait a second that's a j he got tier two while i was saying it he found the space to do so some banshees which are essentially the same as they are in sc2 but have some anti-air capability i believe banshees driving back the tanks but the jaguar tank tier two is done he, he's building units right off the bat trying to get some of those high tech units which are strong but numbers still matter and a couple of the tanks make it all the way by they can indeed miss many of those shots the jaguar trying to hold on takes out one is there any chain reaction opportunity here understanding well no tier 2 yet for Mighty Sheep. He has so much income. He's just trying to overrun the map. Realizing that Master Bell invested a massive amount of, of his metal in getting that tier 2. He's trying to take as much as he can. And so far, I mean, Master Bell's still looking for the center part of the map. He's got to resecure it because even though he has the greatest or the most good, betterest units. Uh, he can't really bring them to bear. There's just too much of the map to control, and a few Jaguar tanks aren't going to make the difference right now. Especially with the constant poking and prodding. Oh, another metal extractor down. 26 to 44 metal. I do wish, uh, and I mean, this is some of the most active development because it's just a bunch of open source volunteers. I do wish for spectating, there was the option to just increase the size of this widget up here, or even better, have like a sort of active graph. Um, that it might already exist, I don't know, without increasing the rest of the UI, which is unnecessary. All right. Okay, I, uh, wrong song. Well, we got Defiance intro, Ground Zero, Brand Morph, Head is the Limit, I, I, Boss Fight, Ninjas in the Engine Room. How about that one? So many choices. I'm, I'm paralyzed by choice. That's the problem. Oh, that's a lot of Jaguars. Or, as a... I'm sorry. Ah, yes. No, wait, no, no, no. I've got... I've got it, I've got it. We're doing a bit. Mid-game. All right, it's bit... It. Here we see... The Armada Jaguar. In its natural habitat. Running around the map. Chasing Tier 1 units. The Jaguar is often made fun of by its heavier counterparts for being a weak tank, for being a lightly armored tank. But it has its own strengths, mobility, electricity, a mild improvement over tier one, and the intimidation factor of the chain lightning. Sure, it doesn't have the range, nor the health, nor the stopping power of some of its heavier counterparts, but the Jaguar has its own strengths, and hopefully they can bring them to bear. 
as the tanks come in and immediately get knocked out. Master Bell, I've neglected to mention the reclaim, the, the salvage, the ability to take some of these wrecks and suck them in the metal and pound them into new army is probably my favorite part of the game. It's relatively intuitive as well. You can also potentially use resbots to resurrect. But it, for every fight where you attack and fail and your opponent is able to get access to those wrecks on the ground, which have between like 40 and, and I believe 60%. I'm not sure the actual number and it's it, it depends, I think, on how much damage it took or something. So that's cool as well. But like here, a Mauser with 162 metal that can fund more than another Jaguar. Uh, but it, it is a significant amount and can easily become your main source of income, uh, depending on the situation in the game. But things have slowed down a lot more than you usually expect to see in 1v1. Wow, a mighty sheep with a whole lot. He's got 2,000. 2,000 energy income, which doubles that of Master Bell, who's been relying it, uh, seemingly entirely on heavy tech. But Master Bell's sitting on 116 metal, uh, as he now has access to, you can see the little icons, the big, thick icons here, compared to just the small ones. Uh, that's how you know they're advanced extractors. And here, the big bull tank. Right, the bull tank on the front lines of the battle, boldly going where no tank has meaningfully gone before. The bull tank, not known for its pathfinding skills, but it finds its own path through the enemy. Blasting through so far, the staggered Dragon's Maw flamethrowers, doing quite a good job of stalling things out, making it very hard for Master Bell to make too much progress. What do we have over here? Oh. Oh, he's built some console combat engineers. Combat engineers are another one of my favorite parts of the game. Oh, yeah, they can also build... Oh, he's building mines. Okay, well. Uh, they can also build units themselves. I, that's definitely something I don't utilize very well. But combat engineers, uh, each faction has a version. Uh, can make or break any part of the game, really. They're just... They're like mini commanders with the impact they can have. They don't really, they don't do any damage directly, but they can build a lot of damage and, and shore up many of your defenses, like we've already seen here. As the fiends made their way by, killed a tier 2 constructor, a very valuable part, but the mines have been placed in that, well, not quite, but... Oh! <laughs> ah! <laughs> Oh, one, one fiend makes it by. They'll expect... Well, go tell your friends what happened here. In shock. He, at first, there were five or six of them, but only he remains. And now, vengeance. Though, the uh, beamer turret here. Great single target, good range. Middle of the map, though. Punching through with some of the heavier tanks. The flamers softening them up. Taking down some of the tanks. Some of the pop-up turrets able to be taken down. Another part of the pop-up turrets is relatively hard to hit. Everything has an accuracy, a projectile speed, including with hitting your own unit. So, I've noticed in my experience, those pop-up turrets are a pain to actually target. Um... Just visually, they kind of look like... I mean, you can target them, but they they are difficult to pick out, especially in a larger battle. But things are slowing down. Mmm. Did Master Bell build his first... I, I don't think I've ever seen one of these in 1v1. Fusion Reactor. 1,000 energy. Used all that metal and slapped it into a fusion reactor. Not an advanced fusion, but what do we have over here? An advanced geothermal plant. So things are skyrocketing. And possibly we could have some skyrockets as well, though nobody's made a nuclear silo. Yeah. The battlefield has progressed dramatically.
the lines are drawn. The wreck's still littering the field, but neither side willing to take the risk of moving any further forward. Combat engineers can reclaim. In fact, that's one of their main jobs. Oh, wait a second. The bulls working around the edge. Is that all? No, those are just walls. Um, which look exactly the same as the pop-up turrets until they pop up, which I think is part of the point. Walls rarely used, but uh, if you're defending against small counterattacks, can come in in a pinch. Mighty Sheep is sitting on 3.9k energy, and he's done it all natural. It looks like it's all wind here. Whereas Master Bell is, is putting together that fusion. He's been the aggressor, but a mammoth. On the field. They, we thought they went extinct, but rebuilt with heavy metal armor. The most, essentially like a tier 2.5 unit. It costs more than some tier 3 units. Well, he does have the geothermal, but he's harnessing the power of the whatever planet we're on. I don't know. Oh, but here come the bulls. Angry about it. They can't be having it. Feeling threatened by the mammoth. There cannot be anything larger than me, they say, but... Tanks on all sides. Some Sheldons on the back line. The flank damage is starting to get real dramatic here. At 25%, but the bulls are starting to run out. 6%. He could, but, well, it can be repaired. The Sheldon's moving up, and another mammoth has joined the field. I feel like that wasn't worth it. He didn't kill it. Mighty Sheep's starting to rack up the efficiency here. He's already produced much more in general. We've got some anti-air towers on the front lines here. Some uh, pop-up Gauss cannons. I think he's just firing into the fog of war. I don't know if he actually... Oh, he does see it with radar. We're going to go to the player cams for a moment. anti new He's that threat. He's mm, using some of those combat engineers back at home right now. But he's building an anti... That was an anti-nuke silo, right? Yeah. Interceptor missiles. Got a bunch of mines back there. Things are progressing pretty dramatically. Repairing the mammoth tank. Holding the line for now. Both sides have some aircraft, mostly for cover, just in case. It's unlikely a surprise bombing run is going to be particularly effective at this stage. Let's go to Master Bell. Who... is trying to find a way. He doesn't... Wow, he doesn't even know how, how deep the defenses run. He's building an extended thermal lance. I, I don't actually know the name of the tower. The Pulsar. So, mine was better. I know. The big ass laser. With a... Pretty much can't be outranged by anything but artillery. Easily melts. Ooh. The mammoth tank. Like, two hits. It has a channeled beam, essentially. Ooh, and it goes right through. Wow, okay. And that will be the backbone to try to push through with the bull tanks. Targets the mammoth. Direct hit. Looks like two hits. Lining up another shot. Whoa, 3%. The energy is running kind of low for Master Bell. He's right. At, he's converting all of his energy, except for a few thousand, into metal to try to up his income via the energy converters here. Oh my God! The laser. I think he aimed at the ground and, and missed slightly, as he doesn't have perfect vision and the radar uh, needs pinpointers in order to um, actually get a lock. So if it's just in the radar, there is a chance to miss because you don't have an exact radar signature. 
They have a guide on the site that explains it better. Science things. Blast out another metal extractor. The ball blasting through a bunch of the defenses. And it looks like Master Bell making some real progress, both in terms of economy and in uh, map control. Where is his commander? Oh, it's out here making some more wind turbines dancing, uh, which just means he's been AFK for a bit. Trying to set up some more cannons. I'm not sure where the... Uh, what the follow-up is here is that that pulsar did more than enough to break the defenses. Bull's looking for an opportunity. One piece of artillery actually softening up these... Ooh, direct hit. Oh, that's, it's really getting a lot of damage. Pulsar misses the shot. Some sumos with their armor skirts waddling in and oh shurikens with their EMP to stun some of the bull tanks right before they get in range of the artillery but fighters looking to intercept knocking down most of the shurikens Master Bell had them ready but it did slow down the bulls for a moment and here come the feeds across the map a few dragon lasers here dragon's claws but that's a lot of feeds closing in on the economy can he actually get to any of the fusions? Pops the energy. There's a cloaked... Wait, he's n it's not even done. If he pops just one of the fusions, it could be a disaster. I don't know what's hitting him here. He's got some of the banshees. It doesn't quite get there. And those uh, lightning turrets. Oh, that was very close. Losing that fusion may very well have chain reacted across most of most of the economy. And Master Bell will hold on for now with a comparable metal. I, his fighters are mostly cleared off the field. I'm not sure. I think they went too far into the empty air for the most part. As uh, the shurikens are starting to really make some progress against the bulls here. Well, neither side has a lot of air presence. Pulsar still going to work. Two pulsars now. But the times of plenty have ended. Both sides desperate to put units on the field. Still some mines to defend back at home. A lot of the metal extractors were lost as well for both sides. Now Mighty Sheep, and I think this is skewed a bit by Reclaim, but is sitting on about 200 metal per minute. Master Bell is starting to get some reclaim as well. Salvaging what's left of his tanks that were blasted apart on the field. Both sides lose it, creating more salvage by attempting to salvage as a lot of those construction and res bots are just getting obliterated. <laughs> The Jaguar's finding some purpose. Even some Twitchers on the field, the combat engineers. Pulse are looking for more. A Juno! Fires a shot off, and the chain reaction of mines. The Juno launcher. One of the things that doesn't make any sense as a new player, but can be used to fire missiles at very long range that wipe out... Uh, mines, radar, and, uh, um, uh, mostly ticks. I think it's just ticks. So, essentially just scrambling everything. Though kind of expensive to fire. But, well worth it when used correctly. Jaguars chasing down the fiends. I think marginally faster. Fiends are 83. Jaguars are 90. So there's still some mines down there. An advanced fusion reactor and a whole lot of construction turrets. How many we got here? Um, 
I'm not sure how to select the title default. A lot of them. Many, like 15 or more. Wait, is that an armed? Armed metal extractor. There's an FPS cam. Yeah, let's let's try that to see. Probably not a good idea. Oh, it's it's the Alright, here we go. We're on the run! All right, Billy, stay behind me. It's getting hot. Oh wait, that's us. Oh, no. oh shit. Oh, it's bad. Oh shit, run, run. Oh fuck, are those jaguars? Oh fuck. Oh, well. So, not not a fun life being a fiend. He lives. But what do we have here? Alright, it's time. Hold on! We're, we're on the run. There's not really much control of the camera here, so... Alright. The bomber's setting up, looking for a run. Hold on. Targeting the fusion reactors. Incoming anti-air fire. I'm going to... Oh! It's not going to land where it needs to. But wait, there's... Oh my god, they all got knocked down. And not nearly close enough. That was a big investment for very little payoff. Those annihilators are winning the game for you. I don't know what the annihilators are. Ah, yes, we've gotten to the balance complaint, um, debate time. Not sure what the annihilators are. Oh, a radar- wait, no, that's a jamming tower. Ah, uh, is that the pulsar? The annihilator? Haven't got a clue how to beat it. But he's gotten an experimental gantry. And it's time for tier three. Here we go, Junos. Finally. Mm, not, a, not, not the Shiva's best angle. Oh, a follower. Is that all? Alfonso underscore douche fuck is chilling for 31 months. I've I've lost control of the camera. Don't look at me. Wait, can we get an FPS cam of the pulsar? Alright. Who am I gonna fuck up today? That guy. Oh, wait. Yeah. Huh. Oh shit, that's loud. Hmm. Well, it appears it's time. Here come the Shivas. A tactical missile launcher as well to try to deal with it. But those lasers have been doing so much. Launching the long range rockets. So pretty much the cheapest tier three unit, but does have longer range options. The pulsars are melting them. Wait, does it actually like tuck back in and try to hide in order to maintain better. I don't know if it takes less damage when it does that, but down goes one. Here come the Shivas. Rarely, this is a, an incredibly rare sight to see tier three units in a 1v1. But where is Master Bell? You gotta actually start worrying about where the commander is at some point. But those pulsars are getting terrible, terrible damage done. Another mammoth goes down. Still blasting here. He's trying to repair. He's repairing with some of the Lazaruses. But here come the Jaguar tanks, closing the distance on all these heavily armored bots. Flanking damage. Pulsar pops back up and burns through. The Grunt's trying to save the day, but it's too little and it's too late. 
Uh, I don't know. He's running from the grunts. I'm not even sure why, because it's just grunts. I don't know. Oh, the construction fleet. Overall, the incomes are still pretty similar. About 8,000 energy. And a hundred and four, oh my god. Maybe not here. Maybe not here. Maybe here's not so great. Oh. Uh, it ran out of range by that much. Oh, a rocket bot. The catapult. I don't know if it outranges. So the range is 1350. The range of the pulsar is 1400. So I'm not a mathematician. But. Hmm. Well. How much other army even is there right now for Master Bell? He's got 27 jaguars, three bulls. Uh, a decent amount of fighters, but he's really relying on these pulsars to hold the line. I mean, the standoff could continue. Essentially, indefinitely. But both sides are continuing to scale their economy up. It's exactly, almost exactly the same energy income right now. Tactical missile launch. Trying to target the pulsars. That is one way to outrange them. Direct hit. Oh, knocks it out! It works! I don't think it kills it in one hit. But two may very well do it. Yeah, well, there you go. Using the Cortex longer range option. The tactical missile. Though, it doesn't have any more banked up. So we're gonna need two. Or... Oh, I heard some bombers. Are those EMP bombers? Either way. Oh, watch out! Didn't quite kill it. The extra armor from going back in its shell. I'm not entirely sure why why the bombers are EMPing their own units, but here we go down the center. But mines are already placed. If they get too close, trying to save the pulsars, but the mines are obliterating the front line. Dealing with oh wait a second, this one's still alive. Though the grunts are flanking it, I don't know if it explodes. It does, but not too dramatically. Shiva's looking to close in. Only one Pulsar left firing now. The Gauss Cannon. Tactical Missile. Knocks it to half HP. Master Bell with very little behind this at the moment. The pulse are still intact. Those things so hard to kill, it seems. Oh, but what's this? Incoming fighters! Well, mostly scouts, actually. Oh, I shouldn't have. This was a mistake. All right. All right. Oh, my God. Thor is here. It's time. Let's go. Turn down the volume on the remote. Well, this is everything right now. The most expensive tier three, arguably. I'm not sure if it's more or less than, oh. But the Jaguar's big daddy. The Thor looking for an opportunity and it will get plenty, but what can stop it? That thing has 56,000 HP. Incoming missiles. The Shiva's backing off. All of them combined are still less valuable than this thing. It's 9,000 energy. Looking for an opportunity. Incoming, I, wait, is he trying to reclaim it? Those are actually construction aircraft. They probably shouldn't be here. More, oh, but wait. What? The D gun! Oh, no! Oh, it's a disaster! We saw it come again, but it gets D gun by the commander. A huge, risky, but potentially game changing move. 
The big D gun. Wait, did I get D gunned? Master Bell wasn't even, didn't even notice. That's how stealthy the commander was. D gun kills everything in its path. Everything. If you get close enough. Of course, if the commander dies, you, you're out of options. The game ends here. Master Bell is pushed back. More advanced fusions on the way. The Shiva's heading to the north side. Looking for an opportunity to break in. The Thor's gonna try to hold the line. There's no commander to save you now. Some EMP bombers? He had some EMP bombers. I don't know where they went, but... Ah, there we are. The EMP bombers coming in. The Shiva's handling it well enough so far. We're gonna be forced back, and he can repair the Thor as well. Oh, in air counter fighters here trying to knock the bombers out, but the Shivas are pretty much already dead. And yeah, more than enough fighters for. Wow, that's actually, I think, possibly way too many fighters. How many? He has, he has like 80 fight. I, I don't know what you're fighting, but 80 fighters does seem a bit excessive. And Thor is still intact. Has its, uh, I believe they're an EMP missile it can launch. Yeah, EMP starburst rocket. Oh wait, two Thors. Tactical missiles firing. Trying to knock out those pulsars. Doing a big chunk of it. That extra armor definitely helping though. So, things are slowing down. There's still been the advanced geothermal. Mighty Sheep now has a significant energy advantage, but can he translate that into metal? Also, oh, another tacta missile. Some scouting fighters. Is that enough? The Pulsar is so tanky. Okay, Master Bell just taking a look. He wants to see. There are advanced fusions right there. Wait, there are some bombers mixed in with this. That's the- that is gonna be the very key part of everything here. The bombers coming in looking for the advanced fusions. And... It's not quite enough! It's not enough! Here come the Thors! He didn't kill him! He's looking for more! And there they go! And with it... Essentially the entire economy. Master Bell with the extra BM questioning the strategy right after knocking it out. Play. Widely considered something of a dick move. Uh, why didn't you counter my strat better, he said, winning the game. Uh, but overall, Master Bell with his investment in Thor's manages to find the killing blow. Overall, very close on the production throughout much of the match, right up until it very, very much wasn't. This is the change in, in production when they um, started <laughs> Metal Excess. I'm not sure what happened exactly there, but... Ugh. Well, a solid game, I think. And uh, that's a taste of a more dramatic one versus one and beyond all reason. If you enjoyed, like, subscribe. I hope I made your day a little bit better. Check out Beyond Reason for the low, low price of free. Um, thank you for watching. Stay tuned.